Welcome back to the Rope Access Channel. In this video, we're going to get into how to ascend your rope fast. Let's go. As you might have seen on the Instagram, uh, last week I did my rope rescue course, got my level three of the ITRA, um, did a direct entry. It was a great week. We did a lot of, I consider it fun stuff. During that week, I filmed Saskia going up like in a rope walking or rope running setup. And I posted a reel and it's got so many views and a lot of people started asking questions. How do you do it? Can you show me the setup, how it's done? So we're gonna get into that today. But before getting into that, I would like to tell a little bit about the history of how we started ascending the way we do in rope access because a lot of the rope access techniques and uh, methods they come from the caving side of climbing. The caving is like the perfect environment to translate to an industrial rope access uh, environment. Caving, it's dirty, it's rough on gear, there are sharp edges everywhere and you have to be really careful of your anchor points. That's what we would like to see in the rope access industry as well. I got a comment from Endika Heredeyer. Oh, I'm sorry, man, I'm gonna butcher your name. Let me check it. Endika Heredeyer Gutierrez. Gutierrez, I like it. Um, rope access technician commented that when I asked in the stories what would you call this technique, the technique that Saskia is showing you right there on the screen. And he said it's the dead method or the caterpillar method created almost 40 years ago by Andre Meozzi. Must be Italian. Dead, D E D, uh, for French. Andre Meozzi was a member of the Spilio Club of La Tronche. Apparently, before Andre came up with the caterpillar method, they were just climbing on ladders and maybe just the old school rope climb technique, the foot loop, foot locking. So that was not a very safe or effective way to climb up a rope or in a cave. Uh, so they came up with the caterpillar method where you use rope clamps and it would have been, I can imagine, way less intensive on the body to climb up 20 to 30 or even 100 meters. That was 40 years ago. And if you think about it, it, it has hardly evolved until for me about, must have been 10 years ago, 2010, 2012, when I found out about the Pantin, the little foot clamp. Caterpillar method always felt inefficient because you lose quite a lot of your input. But if you use the, like a double clamp technique, like one for your hand and one on your foot, so you have a foot loop and your one on your foot, and you can just keep walking, you don't have to sit back all the time. The old school skill of foot locking, and we used to do it in the climbing, the arborist climbing competitions as well. I think it's still in a part of the competition. And when we did that, we used to have an extra backup, but also have a prosthetic on the rope that you push up if you would let go. The prosthetic would grab. I will only go up like two meters just to show you what it looks like. I can sit easily. So that was an example of how they used to climb. 50 years ago. They used ladders and big ropes to climb up, used prosthetics to belay themselves. But these days we have rope clamps and foot clamps and hand jammers and all that good stuff. So with me is Saskia. Saskia, welcome to the show. <laughs> Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? <laughs> well, I am Saskia. Uh, I am an industrial rope access technician. I've been for several years and in my spare time I like to join rope rescue and rope access competitions. So I am part of a competition team called Yes Ma'am and we're just women. Well, last week I was doing my uh, ITRA over here. You were climbing up. We posted a little video on it and everybody was asking questions. How do you do it? How does it work? So that's what we're going to explain today. Before you clip in, where can people find more out about what you guys are doing? Oh, you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram under Yes Ma'am Rescue. So please follow us and support us. Link will be down below in the description. So we're going to give you a little bit of an example, a progression from not efficient to very efficient. First example is going to be how most people ascend the ropes. They forget a few things and we will get into that. So if you can show me a few steps. Step up and sit back down. So look at the sit back. She's up and then when she sits down, this is all, it's like 30, 40 centimeters of wasted energy. I will hold this one. This. 
Okay. So as you can see, that's a lot of wasted energy in every step. So Saskia, how can you improve on that? <laughs> Tighten your shoulder straps. <laughs> Tighten your shoulder straps. All right, let's see if we can spot the difference. So tidy it up. So here we go. So as you can see, the sit back, it's only like 10 or 15 centimeters, while it was like 30 to 40 centimeters before. So this looks way better. Imagine you have to do 20 meters 10 times a day, and every step you get a 40 centimeter sit back. At the end of the day, it saves you maybe 100 meters of climbing, or 50 meters of climbing. And as climbers, we like to be efficient with our energy. That's why we use all these X-Safe winches. A little example of how to do it efficiently. Saskia. So, my setup. I use an ASAP. You can use any kind of backup device that you like. Your chest ascender. Mine is the Camp Turbofast because the bearings make it run nice and smooth. There's less resistance. Then, the foot ascender. I've got a locking one so you don't kick the rope out. It takes a little longer to put it on the rope and take it off. And last but not least, my hand ascender. So I use a basic, and I've added the bungee cord to my basic. And there we go. So I'm noticing two things. One, that little bungee. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah. Um, for me, it's easier to move climbing hand over hand. It keeps me closer to the rope, and being closer to the rope costs me less strength in my arms. All right, that makes total sense. And the other one, in the arborist world, you see the guys with a knee ascender and a Foot ascender. Yep. Why don't you use that? Because in the industry it's not allowed. Because neither the knee ascender or the foot ascender are considered a point of contact to the rope. So we want above our chest ascender, we want to have some other form of contact yep. to the rope. All right, cool. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And uh, we'll see you in another one. Catch you later. Smell you later.